Hollywood, California, Monday, November 30th. The Lux Radio Theater presents Loretta Young in Polly of the Circus with James Gleason and Gavin Gordon. Lux presents Hollywood. Our stars, Loretta Young, James Gleason, and Gavin Gordon. Our guests, Robert Believe It or Not Ripley and Mabel Stark, only woman tiger trainer in the world. Our conductor, Mr. Louis Silvers. Tonight, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille, is in New York City, from which point we shall hear shortly. Here in the Lux Radio Theater, until Mr. DeMille returns to Hollywood next week, is that distinguished gentleman of the screen, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. So do the makers of Lux Toilet Soap welcome you to another hour in the Lux Radio Theater. And now, a note for mother. When it's a matter of baby's delicate skin, you have to be sure the soap you use is really mild, non-irritating. You know Lux Toilet Soap is safe because it's carefully made from the finest and purest ingredients. Laboratory tests have proved this. That's why thousands of mothers find it ideal. That's why we say, use Lux Toilet Soap for baby's bath. We leave Hollywood now for a moment, switch to New York, and start the show with word from Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. This week, my greetings come to you from New York, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the many millions in our audience become many millions and one. As for the first time, I join the Lux Radio Theater's legion of listeners. Next Monday night, as usual, I'll be back on our stage in Hollywood. While I've been spending the last several days rushing from Dallas to New Orleans to New York, previewing my new picture, The Plainsman, the show you and I are about to hear has been prepared by one who is certainly on speaking terms with our microphone, Lionel Barrymore. To one so familiar and so beloved, the mention of his name is the most glowing introduction I could give. He comes to us now from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. My thanks, Mr. DeMille, and good evening, everyone. First of all, I want to clear up any impression that I'm taking Mr. DeMille's place tonight. That, as you and I both know, is something no one could do. <laughs> I'm here, anyway, highly flattered and slightly uneasy, <laughs> hoping to keep things in order until Mr. Mill, uh, Mr. DeMille resumes uh, the reins next week. I'm very uneasy. <clears throat> Tonight is the uh, second time Loretta Young plays the part of Polly. The Polly, whose part she played the first time, was her own sister, Polly Young. Loretta was then 13 and anxious to resume a career on the screen which she'd begun and terminated at the age of four. Well, one day when Loretta was alone, pondering what she might do to swell the family income, a director telephoned. He left a message telling Polly to report at once to the studio. But Polly was out of town. Loretta asked no questions. She hurried to the set and said quite truthfully that she was Miss Young. She played the part, won a contract, and from that day to this, her career has been one of uninterrupted and deserved success. Undoubtedly, that was the most triumphant sister act on record. In a few moments, Loretta again takes Polly's part. No, no, not her sister's, but that of the Polly of the Circus and Margaret Mayo's noted play. James Gleason, famed as both a writer and motion picture comedian, will be heard as Jim McNally and Gavin Gordon, who tonight makes his second appearance on our stage, will take the role of Dr. John Douglas. And now we raise our curtain as the Lux Radio Theater presents Loretta Young in Polly of the Circus with James Gleason and Gavin Gordon. <laughs> the circus has come to town. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a small town and a one-ring show, but come one, come all, and see the fun. The evening performance is in full swing, and Polly, equestrian extraordinary, is in the dressing tent waiting for her turn. Just outside, near the performer's entrance to the ring, two of Polly's friends are watching the show. They are Jim McNally, the boss canvas man, and Toby, an old clown. Toby's in full costume and makeup, and his painted grin grows broader as he listens to the cheers of the crowd. Listen to him, Jim. Listen to him. Yeah, them seals is going big. Yeah, they make that much fuss over a couple of trained seals. What do they do when they see Polly ride bingo? I don't know. I almost wish they wasn't going to see Polly ride bingo tonight. Why? There ain't nothing wrong with Polly, is there? Oh, it's the horse. He's been acting up wild all day. I don't think he's fit to ride, Toby. Well, can't you do nothing with him? I ain't no horse, Doctor. All I know is I give him a friendly pat and he near bit me arm off. Oh. I told Polly, but she only laughed. She raised him from a pup, so she thinks he's perfect. Well, maybe I better speak to her. She'll listen to me. Uh, oh, Polly. Polly, come out here a minute, will you? I'll fix it. I'll tell her she can't do it, see? Toby, Toby. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jim and I want to speak to you, Polly. I know you do. I know what you're going to say, too. But you can save your breath, the pair of you. Oh, that's no way to be talking. Jim and me is thinking of your own good. Oh, I know. You think it's my own good not to ride bingo tonight. Well, you're both wrong. But it ain't safe. Bingo's in a bad mood. Why don't you take another horse and just do the routine stuff? Forget about the hoofs. The customers won't know the difference. Oh, they won't, won't they? With my picture plastered all over town, not a chance. They'd pay good money to see Polly go through the hoops, and they're going to see her. I got my reputation to think of. Listen, if you ride bingo tonight, you got to promise one thing. No hoops. Six hoops. Six hoops. You're crazy. Hmm? The horse no, won't do Jim. it. One hoop is plenty, Paul. One hoop looks hard. Six hoops look like it's easy. Six. And stop talking about it, you uh... two. Why, you act like I was a baby or something. Look at me. How do you like my new dress? Uh, it's pretty. Uh-huh. Shines nice, too. Sure, it ought to shine. Ten dollars for the sequence alone. What time is it, Jim? You got a couple of minutes before you go on. Why? Ah, oh, nothing. Gee, it's nice out here. I like this town better than any we've been in. Same as any other town. Ah, oh, it seems nicer, though. You know, it smells so good. Like flowers and gardens and things. It seems like there's a garden right close by. Yeah, there is. Look, right over there. Oh. Oh, who lives in that house, Jim? One of the big shots. He's a doctor. <laughs> I'll bet the old guy's thrown a fit because her pitch so close. We're almost in his backyard, you know. Uh, I don't know about him having a fit, but a couple of old ladies marched over here this afternoon with a bunch of squawks. What about? Oh, they don't like you wearing tights in the street parade. Well, for Pete's sake, where else would I wear them? Search me. Gee, I better get going. That's the human cannonball finishing up. Not going to change your mind, Polly? Still going to ride that horse? Sure. Come on in and watch. Only one hope, Polly. All right, all right. It will make you feel any better. But wait for me after the act, will you, Toby? Yeah. Maybe we can take a walk before the show moves on. Not tonight. We're pulling out right away. Now there's Bingo. Look at him. Whoa, whoa, boy, whoa. Get him there, Mike. Hold his head. Hold him. Why, the devil himself couldn't hold him. Get back there. Get back easy there. Easy with him, Mike. Easy. Polly, let me get you another horse. You can't run him tonight. He'll throw you sure. Bring him up, Mike. All right, Miss Polly. Say, Polly, Now, listen. Toby, my mother turned over in her grave she thought I was afraid of a horse. Here. Take my cake. Okay, Polly. Here you are, miss. But be careful with him now. All right. Give me a hand. All right. Here up we go. Hey, watch it, Polly. Watch it. I'll be all right. The management of the great United Shows takes pleasure in introducing the greatest bareback rider of all time, the brightest little star in the entertainment world today, Miss Polly. <laughs> Miss Polly will attempt the most difficult equestrian feat ever performed in any ring without the aid of any mechanical safety device whatsoever. Miss Polly will jump through six hoops while standing erect on the back of a galloping horse, and there she goes! Too fast. 
Ah, stop the horse. Stop it, horse. Oh, she's killed. She's killed. Polly, are you all right? Polly. We'll carry her outside. Get a doctor, somebody. Get a doctor, quick. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no cause for alarm. Please resume your seats and the show will go on. <laughs> How is she, Doc? Will she be all right? I can't tell anything yet. She's unconscious. Are you her father? No, sir. But me and Jim, we take care of her. Where are you going to take her, Doc? The hospital? No, there's a flu epidemic. They're all filled up over there. We'll have to take her over to my house. It's just across the way. But can you take care of her there? Will she be all right? Yes, I think so. At least until I can find out what the trouble is. What's your name? Toby, sir. All right, Toby. You run along and tell my housekeeper we're coming. Have her fix up a bed. Uh, uh, yes, sir. All right, now. Give me a hand with it. Go easy. Easy. Mandy. Yes, Miss Jones? Sit here for a while, will you, Mandy? Yes, sir. If she wakes up, let me know right away. Oh, she go stay here? Well, she'll have to for some time, probably. I'd better go and speak to those men. Call me if you need me. Yes, sir. Well, Doc, what's the word? Is she... Is she okay, Doc? She will be. She came to for a moment, but I gave her a shot of morphine to ease the pain. There ain't... There ain't anything serious, is there? Well, she has a nasty cut on her head and her ankle looks pretty bad. I'm afraid it's broken. Uh, how long will it take to patch her up? Can't tell. You can't hurry a broken ankle. That takes time. But, Doc, we ain't got any time. We're moving to another town in a couple of minutes. Well, she can't be moved now. She'll have to stay here. Here? Yes. Ordinarily, I'd take her to the hospital, but I've already explained why I can't do that. Well, Polly ain't no charity case. We can pay our way. Take it easy, Toby. He don't mean that, Doc. He's just upset. You see, we want to do the right thing, that's all. Of course. You'll... You'll treat her right, won't you, Doc? You know, she ain't used to strangers. I'll do everything I can to keep her happy. When she wakes up and finds out we left her here, she might... Uh, she might be homesick, Doc. Hey, look, Doc, you tell her we stayed as long as we could. Tell her we'll send her some money and Bark will keep a job open, sure. I'll tell her. There they go, Jim. It's time. Yeah. You understand, don't you, Doc? We wouldn't be doing this if there was any other way, but the show's got to go on. Of course. Well, come on, Toby, let's get going. Uh, so wrong, Doc, and, and thanks. <laughs> Miss John, Miss John. What is it, Mandy? Come in here, quick. Look, the little circus girl done open up her eyes. All right, get me some brandy. Yeah, sir, I got some right here. Oh. Here, give it to me. Oh, don't miss, Bingo. Don't miss. Shh. Here. Oh. Drink this. No. Come on, come on, drink. Everything's all right now. Oh. There. Who are you? <laughs> My name's Douglas. John Douglas. I'm a brand new friend of yours. Oh, gee, I feel funny. What is this place, anyhow? What am I doing here? This ain't my tent. <laughs> this is my tent. Well, what am I doing here? You better tell oh, me, because... Oh, hush, not John, hush. No, I won't hush. Where's Jim and Toby? Now, if you'll just be quiet, I'll tell you all about it. Jim and Toby left a message for you. Oh. They've gone on with the circus. Gone? It's all right now. They left you here with me. They both wanted you to stay here until... Well, until you feel better. Oh, well, there's nothing the matter with me. It's some kind of a trick, that's what it is. You better let me out of here now. You better let me out. Polly, won't you let me explain? Oh. You're perfectly safe. You're perfectly all right. I don't you know what you're talking about. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to get out of here quick. I don't like the... Oh, my foot. <laughs> now, maybe you'll listen to reason. You have a fractured astragalus. What? Oh, that's what you say. <laughs> I know better. I just hurt my left fin. Your what? My creeper. Creeper? Man, yeah, say, Coney, what's that? Why, my hind wheel, silly. I got a flat. <laughs> I'm afraid you have. You took a bad spell. Yeah. How long am I in for? Well, Toby and Jim want you to stay here until you're well again. Oh, it's all arranged. You're sure it's all right? Of course. They're going to write you, and then just as soon as you're able, why, you can go back to the circus again. Well, it better be soon. Because without me, that show will be on the bum. Oh, they'll get along. Without me? <laughs> Say, did you ever see that show? I saw it tonight. You practically fell in my lap. Well, then you ought to know I'm the best thing in it. Well, I'm the do double 40 racket. I beg your pardon? What for? I, I, I didn't understand what you said just oh, now. I said I'm the double 40 racket. The works. Oh. Oh, yes, of course, the works. <laughs> yeah. 
But look at me now. Oh, you mustn't worry too much about being here. We'll do our best until you're quite ready to be the double 40 racket all over again. Well, I guess you mean all right, but, oh, I can't help feeling terrible. I got a whole show depending on me. Did you ever have to knock off work? He sure did. But did he holler? He thought the whole town was going to die just because he is sick. Mandy, I think I'd like some coffee. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I'll fix it right away. What did she mean? Everybody going to die? Well, you see, I look after people. Oh. What's your line? I'm a doctor. Didn't you know that? Oh, holy jumping Jiminy, a doc. Well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> oh, nothing. I was just thinking about my luck. I fall off a horse and land in a medicine show. <laughs> I'm afraid you're talking too much. Oh, no, not me. I'm a great talker. Say, how long have you been showing in this town? Oh, a couple of years. A couple of years? Say, so you must be good. What kind of a spiel you got? The usual thing. Make the dose as pleasant as possible. Help people forget their troubles. <laughs> Something like my business, huh? Is it? Yeah. Only, of course, we draw bigger crowds. Yeah, I imagine you do. Mm-hmm. Patients haven't been exactly flocking to me up to now, but I'm getting there. Well, let me give you a little piece of advice. No matter how bad the medicine business is, don't go in for no riding act. No, I'll try not to, but why? Well, because if your horse is okay, then the ground's bad. If the ground's okay, then the horse is wrong. There's always something. You can depend on that. Don't ever go in for nothing that depends on something else. <laughs> Thanks. I'll remember that. <laughs> but right now, I think you'd better try and get some sleep. Why? We've got a lot to do tomorrow. What? Well, an X-ray first, and then we'll have to set that ankle. Oh. Uh, are you going to do it? Why, yes, unless you'd rather have someone else. Oh, no, no. I, I just wanted to make sure. Hey, Joe, fill this order, will you? Oh, morning, Mrs. Strong. Oh, good morning. I have my order written out. Will you send it right away, please? Yes, ma'am. I'll make it up myself. Good morning. Ned. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Out bright and early, Anna. Yes. Suppose you heard the news. Well, well, if you're talking about that young Dr. Douglas, I certainly have. Seems to me the hospital's the place for injured folks, not a bachelor's house. Well, it's none of my business. But if I was Dr. Douglas, I'd certainly watch my step. Taking a girl in from a circus. He ought to know better. When I see my husband... Can I get a quick shave? Time, Bud. Time. Want a shave and a haircut, Mr. Strong? Yeah, just a shave. Make it close, Phil. Sure. Hey, Strong. Oh. I hear the young doc's opening up a new hospital up to his house. Oh. Yeah, it's a mighty pretty patient, too, from what I understand. I always wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas is a fool. You ought to have more sense than to do a thing like that. Say, you think you lose out on being president of the hospital board? Well, I don't know. He's the man for the job. The only one we have. I'm going to have a talk with him this afternoon and pound a little horse sense into him. Hurry up, will you, Phil? Oh, sure, sure. Sorry, Mr. Strong. Oh, well, come in, Mr. Strong. Come in. Thanks. Is the doctor at home? He sure is. This way, Mr. Strong. Thank you. He out of the living room here with Miss Polly. Dr. Douglas, Mr. Strong, chair. Oh, come in, Mr. Strong. Yeah, good afternoon. Glad to see you. This is Miss Polly Sanders. Mr. Strong. How do you do? I'm pleased to meet you. We've just finished with the x-ray. I'm carrying upstairs in easy stages. You ready to go now? Yeah, I think so. Well, we'll take it nice and slow. All Douglas, right. if you've got a moment, I'd like to... I'll be right with to... you. Oh, Mandy. Yes, sir. Is everything all right? Yes, sir. Come on, Miss Polly. Put your arm around my shoulder. How's that? That's it. Uh, Douglas, I'd like to... Make that... yourself at home, Strong. I'll be down in just a couple of minutes. Now, wait a minute. Before you go any farther with this, I want to tell you that I'm here at the request of the hospital board. The board? Yes. We don't feel, Douglas, that you're in a position to, well, uh... To what? Well, speaking frankly, I suggest you send this young woman back to her people at once. I'll drive her over to the next town myself. Are you crazy? She's in no condition to travel. Well, she can't stay here. What are you talking about? I, uh... I think you understand... Why, he means it's it. It's all right. Well, it's not all right. He can't talk like that about me. I didn't ask to be brought here, did I? I didn't even know about it. But I'll get out. I'll get out right now. Be quiet. You I can't. won't. I won't. Strong. I want you to listen to me. It's my business to see that sick people are cared for. The hospital's filled, every bed. This happens to be the only solution. Now, do you understand? This girl is going to stay here. I'm speaking for your own good, Douglas. You can't expect to do things like this without making enemies. All right, then I'll make them, but the girl stays. 
Come on, Polly. All right. In just a moment, we'll continue Polly of the Circus, starring Loretta Young with James Gleason and Gavin Gordon. But now, let's step over to the Universal Studios. It's after six. The last girl has just been interviewed for a new part by the casting director, and his secretary answers his impatient ring. Yes, sir? Say, what's the big idea of sending that girl in to see me? Have I got time to waste? Well, well I thought because you did use her once last year, maybe... Yeah, maybe she changed in a year. One look at that girl ought to have told you she wasn't right. This is the movies. We have pictures, close-ups. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, it wasn't your fault, I guess. But it's enough to make you chew your nails, the kind of complexion some girls bring in here. In this day and age, don't girls know what to do about their skin? In this day and age, smart girls know what to do about their skin. They use rouge and powder, but they're careful to remove them thoroughly. Otherwise, pores become choked, enlarged. Tiny blemishes, a dull, lifeless look come. Cosmetic skin. Use Lux Toilet Soap to guard against this danger. Its rich, active lather sinks deep. Carries out of your skin every last bit of dust, dirt, or stale cosmetics. It protects complexions. When you use Lux Toilet Soap, you know your skin is getting the same care nine out of ten screen stars use. Use it before you put on fresh makeup. Make it your bedtime beauty care. It's the soap all Hollywood uses. The official soap of the great Hollywood studios. We hear now from tonight's guest director, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. We continue with Polly of the Circus, starring Loretta Young with James Gleason and Gavin Gordon. Six weeks have passed since John Douglas befriended Polly, and the little circus rider is still a member of his household. During that time, Polly's seen a new world, a world of comfort and ease. But they've not been happy days for John. As a result of the town's disapproval, his practice has dwindled to almost nothing. We find him in his office. There's a worried look on his face as he talks over the phone to one of his few remaining patients. Well, how is she this morning? I see. Well, I'd better run out and see her, Mrs. Small. If she's running a temperature again... What? Miss John. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Oh, I see. Well, that's quite all right. Not at all. Goodbye, Mrs. Small. Is that Miss Small's little girl sick again? Yes. Well, you better have some breakfast before you go out there. I'm not going out there. Mrs. Small's called in Dr. Withers. Dr. Withers? Why, he ain't no better than a... Now, what'd she go call him for? Is there any mail, Mandy? Yes, yeah, sir. I done brung it in. Here it is. Dr. Withers. I know he'd tell us such foolishness. Everybody call him Dr. Withers. <laughs> Person say he done scared a whole bunch of new cures for the misery. Well, I sure ain't never heard of him curing nobody or nothing. Mandy. I... Yes, sir? Where's Miss Polly? She's sitting out there in the garden. Uh, what's the matter, Mr. John? You got bad news in that letter? I'm afraid so. Don't bother about breakfast for me, Mandy. Yes, sir. Just as you say Polly. Oh, hello. I thought you were gone. Say, weren't you supposed to take out the Marshall boys' tonsils today? Yes, but they... They decided to let him keep them. Oh. Polly, I've got some news for you. News? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. It's about those x-rays you took yesterday. Is it... Uh, am I all right? Don't be frightened. You took a beautiful picture. That ankle's better than it ever was. Oh. Yes, it feels fine. <laughs> well, you don't look very happy about it. What's the matter? Don't you want to get well? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, of course I do. Well, what's the matter? You look worried. Oh, it's nothing, I guess. Polly, has anybody been talking to you? What do you mean, anybody? Anybody like old Strong, for instance. Oh, y yes, he was here yesterday. Yes? Mm -hmm. Well, what did he say? Well, he said he supposed I'd be leaving now that I was well again. And that's what I've been thinking about. How soon do you think I ought to go? Do you... Do you want to go, Polly? Well, that's what I was thinking about when you came. I was trying to figure things out. Well? Well, I was using my head the way you taught me to, and oh, that's such hard work using your head when all you ever used before was your feet. Mm hmm Well, what was the result? Well, Mr. John, 
Did you ever have to make a decision that would change your whole life? Every day I'm making one right now. What? Go on. Well, it's about the circus. Oh, I wish Toby or Jim would write. It's been so long since their last letter. You know, if I could just have a good long talk with Toby, I'd know what to do. Oh, he's terribly smart for a clown. You mean you'd do whatever Toby advised? Yes, I would. If he told me to go back to the circus this very day, I'd pack up right now and take the next train. Polly. Hmm? I got a letter just before I... It may help you to decide. A letter? Uh-huh, it's from Jim. Show's over in Brockport. Oh, does he want me to meet them there? No, he's coming over here to see you this afternoon. And there are... Uh... There are some things in the letter that I thought you ought to know about before he gets here. What? It's about Toby. Oh, Toby. What's he done now? Don't tell me Barker fired him. No, Polly. Toby's dead. Oh, no. Died last week. Pneumonia. Jim says everything was all right. They had a good doctor and he wasn't a bit sorry to go, except that he... He uh, just didn't get to see you again. Oh, but I should have been there. I should have been there. He was always so good to me, and then when he needed me most, I let him down. Why didn't they send for me? He didn't ask for you because he knew you couldn't get there in time. And what's more, he didn't really want you to come. Toby didn't want me. Oh, I don't believe that. You don't understand. Toby didn't want you to come back there. It's all here in Jim's letter. He said he hoped you'd forget you'd ever known a circus. He said he wanted you to be a lady. Toby always said I was a lady. But he meant that he wanted you to do some other things besides riding. He thought you were fitted for something better than circus life. Oh. He said, no more parades. Oh. Did did Toby say that? I have the letter here. You can read it later. But I, uh... I I wanted to talk to you about it first. Is everything clear now? Mm Mm-hmm. Will you give up the circus? I I think I gave it up long ago. Oh, I'm glad. Are you? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't know what that means to me. I couldn't bear to think of going back now that you and and poor old Toby both say the same thing. Oh, I could cry. I feel so... I mean, I feel fine. Then it's settled. You're you're not going back? No. But uh, it's going to be kind of hard, isn't it? You see, I I, I have no job and no home. Well, you have this one. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Yes, you should. I wanted you to. This will always be your home, Polly. Always? If you'll stay... Not because of what Toby said, but because you really want me here yourself? Because I want you here myself. Polly, I... Oh, then I'm going to stay just as long as you'll have me. I'll keep house for you. I'll never go away as long as I live. Are you sure, Polly? So (laughs) sure that you'll tell Jim about it when he comes? Of course I'll tell Jim. He'll understand. Polly. What? Has... uh, Has Jim ever said anything to you about... About what? Has, uh... Has Jim ever asked you to come back... For his sake. What do you... Oh, do you mean that... Polly, don't look at me like that. You don't understand. Listen. I don't want you to go away with Jim or anyone else. Not because you haven't a job or a home, but... Miss John? Yes? Miss John, the hospital done called up. Miss Strong wants to see you down there. Well, did you say what it was about? No, so just said come on as soon as you can. All right. I'll see you later, Polly. Jim! Oh, Jim! How are you, Polly? Oh, I've never been so glad to see anyone in my whole life. Stand up back there. Let me have a look at you. There. You know, you're different. You're all grown up. Uh, Never mind about me, Jim. I... I want to hear about Toby, huh? Yeah, Paul, but not now. I only got a few minutes. Where's the doc? He's out in the call. He told me you were shown over in Brockport. Yeah, we couldn't get no nearer to here. Town council or something pulled wires and we couldn't get appointment. Oh, you must be mistaken, Jim. Why, nobody do a thing like that. Well, they did just the same. I don't know who. Ah, uh, I know. Must have been that Mr. Strong. Whatever he says goes around here. You know, Jim, I don't think he likes me. Well, he can't hurt you, Polly. You're through with this place. Listen, Barker said I was to tell you this. He's fed up with all the bum riders he's got, and he wants you back. You can write your own ticket. Oh, Jim. I knew you'd be bowled over. I had it all figured out. You know, Toby had an idea you were through with a circus, but I knew better. I know circus blood. Jim, I got something to tell you. You don't have to tell me nothing. I know. I told Bach I'd bring you back with me. Get your things now. We'll we'll make the next train. Jim, wait a minute. 
What's the matter? Well... You, you want to come back, don't you? Jim. Jim, I, I don't want to hurt you, but I can't come. You mean I won't let you? All right, I can't do that. Oh, no, no, I don't mean that. I... I don't want to. Polly. Oh, Jim, I couldn't come back. I just couldn't. When I lie in my room at night and everything's so peaceful and still, I can't help remembering how it used to be at the circus. The cold, dark trains and the awful noise and that dirt... And all the mob in the tent and the ring. With me going round and round on bingo and jumping through hoops until I got so dizzy I could hardly see. I can't go back, Jim. I just couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I pulled a wrong one, Polly. I didn't know you'd come to feel like that. You're not disappointed in me? No, no. It just seems funny to have it turn out like this. I guess I never figured on your leaving us and not needing me no more. Oh, don't talk like that, Jim. Everything always turns out all right in the end. Yeah, maybe, but when you say you're not coming back, it it seems like I can't see nothing ahead of me except a lot of long, dusty roads and nobody on them. Oh, if I could only make you understand, Jim. Miss Polly? Hmm? Mr. Strong's here. Oh, but the doctor's out, Mandy. Yes, sir, I told him Excuse that. Excuse me, Miss Polly, but it was you I wanted to see. Me? Yes, can you spare me a few minutes? Why, oh, yes, I guess so. Uh, this is Jim, one of my circus friends. Oh, indeed. How are you? Well, I'm very glad to see you, young man. You've come at a very fortunate time. Very fortunate. The, uh, doctor and I had a talk this morning. We were discussing Miss Polly's future. Oh, yeah? Yes, I admit I was quite surprised. He tells me that Miss Polly refuses to return with you. Oh, Mr. Strong, I just explained to Jim and he understands. Well, perhaps he does, but do you? If Polly wants to stay here, she can. You ain't got nothing to do with it. Oh, but I have. You see, I represent a large portion of the townspeople, and they have certain ideas. Well, it, uh... All right, spill it. <clears throat> yes, I, I knew I could talk to you, frankly. You see, the general opinion here seems to be that the young lady would be happier if she returned to her own environment. We don't think she realizes how grave the situation is. What do you mean? Well, I'll put it to you in plain words. Unless you return to your former work, or at least leave this town, Dr. Douglas will suffer. Oh, I see. You mean that just because you don't like me, you'll take it out on him, huh? I mean that your presence here is detrimental to the doctor's interests. But I haven't done anything, and neither has he. What'll you do to him? Why, nothing. But he may find it necessary to move to some other town. Oh, but you can't do that. Why, he loves this place. I'm sorry. I thought you'd be glad to know. I thought you'd be glad to help him. Well, I do want to help him, but I don't understand. Does, uh, does he know how the people feel? You see, I was talking to him only this morning, and he said he wanted me to stay. Well, you put him in a very difficult position. man can't ask a woman to leave his house. Nobody has to ask Polly to leave. She don't have to stay any place where minute, she's Jim. not wanted. Wait. Does... Does the doctor know you're telling me this, Mr. Strong? Did he ask you to tell me? No. And he refused to tell you himself. And then if I stay... I... If you stay, his practice will fall off to nothing. And you'll lose out on the hospital appointment. It'll be your fault. Oh, he, um, he never told me that. Well? Well, I guess I've been pretty dumb. I, if I'd known he was getting into trouble on my account, well, I, he won't get into any more trouble. Does that mean you'll leave? Oh, sure, I'll leave. Couldn't do anything else now, but you, you've got to promise me something. He'd feel kind of bad if he thought I went on his account, so I want to tell him that I went away because I... I got homesick for the circus. Tell him I had to go because I love the circus more than anything. Will you tell him that? I'll tell him. When are you going to leave? Tonight, I guess. I'll go out and get my things together. Yes. Well, I'll run along. You're doing a fine thing, Miss Polly. Splendid thing. Well, good afternoon. Polly. Yes, Jim. You, you don't want to do this, do you? Oh, if it'll help him. Polly, you and the Doc, uh, you like him? Yes. A lot, huh? Yes, Jim. Yeah, I kind of thought so. Oh, Jim, you go along, will you? Sure, sure, sure. Want me to wait at the station for you? Uh-uh. No, I'll, I'll see you at the show. A ticket to Brockport, please. Round trip? One way. 275. Polly. Oh, Polly. You've come down. I, 
What are you doing down here? Why, I... Uh... Amanda told me you'd gone. Well, I'm sorry. You see, you didn't come home for such a long time. I wanted to say goodbye to you, but goodbye. I... Goodbye? Yeah. Polly, what's the matter with you? Why, nothing. Why, well, I'm just acting natural the first time in weeks. I didn't know what I was talking about before, but I can't stay here. I'm going back for the show. But you can't. Oh, but I've got to. Well, there's something wrong here. No, there isn't. Jim came today, and I... But this morning, only this morning, you said you wanted to stay here. You meant it, Polly. Now, that was before I saw Jim. You see, I didn't know how I felt until he began talking about the old days and how Bark had been keeping my job open, and... Well, you, you know, it, it sort of got me, so back I go. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, yes, I do. I don't think I'm ungrateful. But don't ask me to stay either, please. I'd go crazy. You see, I, I've had enough. I want to get back where I belong. You belong with me. No, I, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, I've got to talk to you. No, there's nothing for us to talk about. Can't you see? It, it's all over. Can't you see how much I want to go? I want to get back in the ring again. I want to see the lights and hear the music and the cheers. I want to hear the rumble, the wagons, and the cars at night. I want to live and die like circus folks live and die. There's nothing else that matters to me. Nothing. Goodbye, John. Polly, Polly, wait, I... Goodbye. <laughs> Pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, Loretta Young and our old star cast resume the story of Polly of the Circus. But right now, I'd like you to meet a real Polly of the Circus. Oh, only her name isn't Polly. It's Mabel. Mabel Stark of the Al G. Bond Circus. And Mabel is the only woman in history to break, train, and perform with tigers. Mabel isn't satisfied to get into the ring with just one tiger. She's got to have 16. At present, she's here in California training her saber-toothed companions for next season. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mabel Starr. That's all very nice, Mr. Barrymore. But I'm warning you right now, my act is tigers and not radio. Well, I admit it takes a lot of courage to face a full-grown microphone bare-handed... <laughs> But don't worry about this one, Mabel. You just hold your ground and browbeat it like I do. All the same, I'd sooner wrestle a tiger. <laughs> well, Mabel, just what quirk of fortune to turns a gentle little lady like you into a tiger trainer? W were you unlucky in love? Go on, Mr. Bearmore. <laughs> but a man had something to do with it. He dared me to get into a cage with a tiger. So I bought a tiger, and I've been working with him ever since. That's 21 years ago. And how does one work with a tiger? Courage, patience is all you need. Tigers are like a bunch of kids. They like to pick a scrap. Once in a while, there's bound to be an accident. Well, obviously, you've survived all yours. Tigers have sent me to the hospital 16 times. One of those times, they put me together like a patchwork quilt. 375 stitches. Mm. Six weeks later, I was back in the ring wrestling the same tiger. That must me up. Her name was Nellie. Well, to paraphrase the old song, Nellie was not a lady. You can't always blame the tiger. Sometimes they don't feel very well. And the only way they have got of letting you know is with their claws. It's a very effective method, but a little rough on the complexion. Well, then permit me to recommend Lux Toilet Soap. Believe me, I use plenty of Lux Toilet Soap outside of the ring. Inside, the best skin protection is a light buggy work and a length of broomstick. Well, Mr. Bearmore, I guess I'd better go back and feed my tigers. Maybe one of these days, they'll be having me for supper. <laughs> they ought to know by now if they'd enjoy you. They've sampled you often enough. <laughs> well, if they do, I'm hoping for just one thing. I hope I give them the worst case of indigestion a tiger could ever have. Good night. <laughs> The show goes on. Polly of the Circus, starring Loretta Young with James Gleason and Gavin Gordon. And now 
another month has gone by, and Polly's back with the circus again, trying her best to forget that she ever knew another kind of life. It's early evening, several hours before the show begins. Outside the big tent, Barker, the ringmaster, is talking to Jim. Well, Jim, what's the excuse tonight? I don't get your excuse for what? The cook tent was started half an hour late. The sideshow tent ain't showed up yet. Why? I'll tell you why. Your wagons was on the bum. Number 38 was carrying a canvas and she broke down. Get after your blacksmith. It's his fault. Stalin again. Nothing's ever your fault. Yeah, and I know why. Yeah? Yeah, you ain't a canvas man. You're a nurse girl. Is that all? No, that ain't all. There's got to be a change around here. Why? Ever since Polly got back, she's been as much use to me as a sick cat. I'd rather have a sick cat. I know how to treat them. Anything else? Ah, don't get sore, Jim. It's nothing personal. It's a riding I'm beefing about. You've been watching her act, haven't you? Every day. And you know how rotten it is. And she's too high and mighty to ride in the parades. Trying to act like a lady. She ain't no lady. She's a bareback rider. And what are you going to do about it? I'm going to call her and call her hard. Listen, Barker. You're the boss here, and I take my orders from you. But if ever I catch you abusing pal, boss or no boss, I'll pitch you clean over the tent. All right, all right. No one's abusing her, but you tell her what I said. I want a performance tonight, a good performance. She's got to show me. Jim. Hello, pal. How you feeling? Oh, kind of lazy. Do you mind if I stay out here with you for a while? Oh, glad to have you. Oh, don't sit on the grass, Paul. Here, try that box. What are you looking at? The sky. Gonna have a nice moon tonight. Same moon as always. <laughs> Got a headache? Mm-mm. I thought you looked a little tired or something. No, I'm okay, Jim. Anything you want? Drink of water, soda pop, a hot dog? No, thanks, Jim. <laughs> What's the matter, Paul? Can't you tell me? Tell you what? What's bothering you? Maybe I could help you if you'd let me. Why have you been cutting parades? If it's because you feel sick, all you got to do is tell me. I can fix it up with Barker. No, I'm not sick. And I just don't like parades anymore. Well, you used to be crazy about riding through the streets and waving to the kids. Well, I can change my mind if I want to, can't I? Oh, stop asking me so many questions, I'll ask Jim. as many as I want, and you'll answer them. I've been keeping my mouth shut long enough. Now, come clean, pal. Are you homesick for... for that other place? Oh, what's the use? Yes, I am. I thought I was it. I was a fool to let you come back. You don't belong to us anymore. Oh, don't say that, Jim. Don't make me feel like I'm not wanted here, too. You know better than to say that. What's more, I don't think it was in the way there, either. I've been thinking things over. There's something funny about this whole business. You should have gone straight to the dock and had it out with him. I couldn't do that. You heard what Mr. Strong said, and he was right. I knew all the time those people didn't like me. I just didn't belong there, Jim. Paul, uh... Remember what I asked you that day about liking the dark? Well? Still do, don't you? Yeah. Did he... Did he ever let on that, uh, that he cared for you in the same way? No. Oh, once I thought maybe that... Oh, well, it's all over now. But no matter what, you was happy just to be there with him. Yes. I was happy just to be there with him. Paul, you ought to go back. You ought to go back and have a talk with him. No, never. Then let me write to him and tell him why you left. Jim, if you ever dare. But maybe there's been some mistake. There wasn't any mistake. Now listen, Jim. If you write to him, I'll run away. I'll run away and you'll never find me again. I'll kill myself. Oh, don't talk like that. I wouldn't do anything you didn't want. I'd give my life to help you, Paul, only I don't seem to know how. Jim, I'm sorry. I couldn't do without you. You know it. But only on nights like this, Jim, I just can't help thinking about him. You know, wondering where he is and what he's doing. I wonder, Jim, if... if he remembers me. Mr. John, I've been cleaning out the attic, and I found some things here I don't know what to do with. Give them away, Amanda. Don't keep anything we can't use ourselves. No, we can't use these... I don't like to give them away. <laughs> Ain't nobody here can wear clothes like this. What? Oh, that's Polly Circus dress, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sir. Well, wrap it up and put it back where you found it. She may send for it someday. Oh, she won't send for nothing from this house. What you want me to do with this book? Put it in the bookcase. It ain't yours. It's Miss Polly's. This year's her don't book. What? <laughs> Little book she read her don't send. 
Every time you tell her don't say something, she read it down and then she stood it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me that. Don't say ain't, say isn't. Don't say learn him, say teach him. Yeah, so she was figuring on learning. Oh, not teaching me. <laughs> See who that is, Mandy. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Oh, good evening. Oh, come in, Mr. Strong. Mr. and Miss Strong, Mr. John. Well, Douglas, hard at work as usual, eh? <laughs> Mrs. and I dropped in to have a little talk. Glad to see you. Such a busy man you are these days, aren't you, Doctor? Sit down, both of you. Is this a professional visit? Oh, no. I never complain. No, we've got some news for you, Douglas. I should say we have. Congratulations, my boy. Well, thanks very much, but I... I don't know what you're talking about. Well, naturally you don't. Well, we've just come from the hospital board meeting. As you know, I've been putting off the election for quite some time in your interest, my boy. Now do you know? Oh, tell him, Edgar. <laughs> Douglas, you're the new president. And there's a tidy little sum attached to the honor. You've earned it, my boy. You've earned it. Well, how in the world did that happen? I thought this town was off me for life. It's all Edgar's doing. He made the most beautiful speech all about that circus girl. Oh? <clears throat> yes? How did she come into it? It wasn't how she came into it, but how she got out of it. Everybody appreciated the way you sent her packing when she didn't have the shame to go herself. The way I... What? Uh, Mrs. Strong's a little confused. I I simply told the board that you Mrs. Were... Strong, will you please repeat what you oh, said just now? Douglas, you mustn't take that attitude. Go on, Mrs. Strong. Well, I... I don't remember what I said. Really, I don't. I... You said well, I sent her packing. Well, uh, yes, I did. What else did your husband say? Well, he said... Oh, Edgar, I wish you... Yes, 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 I'll tell him myself. You ought to be thankful that someone like me has his best interest at heart. Douglas, I told him that you asked her to leave when you realized she was interfering with your work. Of course, you know I did nothing of the kind. Strong, you spoke to that girl. What did you say oh, to her? Now, Douglas... What did you say to her? You were just being childish. All right, it'll be easy enough for me to find out. I can ask Jim. I should have had sense enough to have done it before. Yes, and I'll tell you why you didn't. Because you didn't want to know. All that highfalutin talk about it being your duty was just a lot of bunk. You were glad enough when she went. Didn't see you taking any trains to get her back. You knew you couldn't have your job and the girl, and she knew it too. Then you did tell her. You told her she was hurting me by staying. Well, she was. That's no answer. Oh, I've had enough of this. Yes, I told her. Oh, look, her clothes, huh? her circus clothes. Put them down. Please take your hands off those things. Mandy. Dr. Douglas, what are you going to do? I'm going to find Polly and beg her pardon for being a fool. And you and your town can get another doctor. I'm through. Yes, sir, Mr. John. Pack my grip, Mandy, and hurry about it. I'm leaving town right away. Oh, Mr. John, there ain't no trains tonight. Then I'll take the car. Oh, you're crazy, Douglas. You don't even know where she is. Don't I? There hasn't been a single day since she left here that I haven't known where she is. She's over in Hillsdale, according to the route sheet, and that's where I'm going. Please, Mr. Barker. Well, what's the matter with you now? I uh, want to ask you to let me off tonight. What? Again? Listen, I had a talk with Jim yesterday about you. He said that oh, you... Oh, I know, but just this once, please. Just tonight. With all them people inside that's paid their good money to see you, next. Oh, Mr. Barker, I don't feel as if I could go on. I'm nervous. All right, tomorrow. I'll give you a great show tomorrow. If you ask me, I don't think you could give me a great show at any time. Barker, you don't mean that. What's the matter with my ex? What's the matter with her? Don't you know? Well, me. Maybe I haven't thought much about it lately. I'll say you haven't. You've been good for nothing ever since you had that spell of being a fine lady. And what good did that do you? Nothing. First thing you know, you'll be out of luck all around. Out? Oh. Yeah, you don't think I'm going to head my bill with a dead one, do you? Why, well, I'm not a dead one, and you know it. Why, well, I'm the best writer since my mother's time. Stop talking about your mother. She'd be ashamed to own you. She wouldn't. I can write as good as I ever did. Well, you got to show me. All right, I will show you. But not tonight. Oh, not tonight. Please, let me off. No. Well, I tell you, I can't ride tonight. You've got no right to ask me. I feel like something awful was going to happen. If Toby was here, he wouldn't make me ride. Oh, I wish I were dead. Oh, stop that. All right, all right. I'll let you off. The crowd's in there and I've got the money. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You ain't got no right to talk about Toby. He was a trooper. You ain't. You let the other people do the work and you get the pay. Get out of my way. Go on in and tell him I'm coming. Go on in and announce me. I'll show you what I'm good for. I'll show you. Keep quiet. Do you think I'd let you go on feeling like that? I'm no murderer. I'll pull Elsie on in your place. Oh, no, you won't. Nobody's going on in my place. My mother would be ashamed of me, would she? I'm no good to you, am I? You or anybody else. All right, I'll show you. I'll show you exactly how good I Polly, am. Polly, come back. Come back. Where are you going? I'm going to ride. 
I'm going to ride like nobody ever rode before. Polly, come back. Come back. <laughs> Yeah, sure, this is the place right here. You stand right in the entrance and you can see everything, sir. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. There's a man here asking for you. Hello, Jim. Oh, Doc, what are you doing around here? I want to see Polly. I've got to see her. Sorry, Doc. It's against the rules. I'll wait till after the show, then. It's no use. She don't want to see it. Well, I understand what... But it's all right now, Jim. I know what happened. Well, I'll stay here. I'll go get her. The great United Shows takes pleasure in introducing the greatest little writer of all time, the brightest little star in the entertainment world today, Miss Polly. <laughs> Will attempt to jump through six hoops and the wonder horse, Barbarian. Barbarian? Why, she's crazy. What did you say? I say she's crazy. She ain't supposed to write him. Why, he ain't been trained to do her act. He can't do the hoops. Doc, I couldn't get her. I, I was too late. She's in the ring already. She's going to ride Barbarian. Stop her, Jim. Can't you stop her? This man says the horse hasn't been trained. I can't stop her now. Come on in, quick. She done it. Stand back, Doc. Don't let her see it. She's swaying. Why, why she'll miss it. Lock, I wrote that horse. Okay. Come on and stop her. Don't let her do it again. It's suicide. Folly, folly. Look at her. She's going to fall. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Keep your seats, please. Everyone, keep your seats. Polly, Polly, are you all right? What happened? Polly, Polly, are you all right? Oh, what happened? You fainted, that's all. I, I rode, though, didn't I? Sure, sure you did. Look, there's someone here to see you, Paul. Who is it, Jim? It's John, Polly. John. Oh, no. No, go away, please. Not until you're ready to go with me. Jim. Right here, Paul. Oh, Jim, tell him to go away. You know how it is. He don't have to go now, Polly. Evans fixed up fine. It's okay. Oh. Is it John? Yes. Yeah. It's okay, Polly. <laughs> you mustn't say things like okay. Say all right. It's all right. <laughs> I've talked to Strong, and so now I know why you left me. It was all a mistake. Oh. Oh, Polly. Don't close your eyes. Look at me. Are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. You and I are going away somewhere for a long rest. And then we're going to settle down in another town. And I'll never have to ride anymore? Never. All you'll have to do is to learn how to, how to be happy again. Oh, it'll be so easy, John, with you to teach me. The curtain falls on Polly of the Circus, but tonight's star comes out again a little later. Now, a man who spent the last 20 years searching the far corners of the earth for the strangest truths under the sun arrived here this afternoon by airplane. What he's been able to learn about Hollywood in this short time, I really don't know, but I've asked him here to tell us. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's most famous fact finder, believe it or not, Robert Ripley. Good evening, everybody. And thank you, Mr. Barrymore. Well, I'm glad you agree I'm Barrymore. I, I wouldn't have been at all surprised if you proved I was Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Did you enjoy your trip? Oh, immensely. I broadcast on the Atlantic coast last night, and here I am on the Pacific coast this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to keep in key with Hollywood, I wouldn't have come by plane at all. I would have come on horseback. Believe it or not, Hollywood is a one-horse town. It began with a horse. <laughs> in 1870, a man named Wilcox bought all the land, which is now Hollywood, to use as a pasture for his horses. At that time, the most noted racehorse was named Hollywood. 
Wilcox admired her so much that he named this pasture where we are now after this horse. <laughs> and believe it or not, a horse was responsible for the first motion picture ever made. Leland Stanford, then governor, wanted to prove to a friend that a trotting horse could have all four legs off the ground at the same time. They settled the argument by setting up 24 cameras and taking 24 different pictures as the horse raced by and then combined them into the first motion picture ever made. And the first regular picture made in California was filmed by two brothers named Horsley. <laughs> While the first movie made in Hollywood was a horse opera, a type of film now known as a Western. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. But, but suppose you get out of the saddle, Mr. Ripley, and tell us what you have to say about soap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, one time, soap was so expensive in California that the old 49ers found it cheaper to send their laundry all the way to China, even though it took six months to get a shirt back. Ha, <laughs> I see. And now it only takes half as long. <laughs> well, <laughs> to get down to a serious note, and I know I'm supposed to say something about Lux, I have a Lux fact that is really amazing. If the cakes of Lux toilet soap manufactured in a single year were put end to end, they would make a necklace that would frame the whole United States. It would stretch from the Atlantic along the Canadian border to the Pacific then down the coast, coast to the Mexican border, then across the continent again to the Atlantic, then up the Atlantic to the starting point at the junction of Maine and Canada. And there'd be a huge amount of soap left over. <laughs> and that's an awful lot of soap, yeah. believe it or not. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Barrymore, and good night. Thank you, Mr. Ripley. Thank you. And now, tonight's charming star, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Loretta Young. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Barrymore. It's been a pleasure indeed to have been on the Lux Radio Theater tonight. I'm, I'm sorry for just one thing, Loretta. Hmm? I wish our listeners could all be in here to, so they could see you as well as hear you. <laughs> if you. I'm not getting too personal, just what do you use to keep a complexion like yours? Well, Mr. Barrymore, that's something I'm going to let you figure out for yourself. It isn't by any chance a, a little three-letter word <laughs> beginning with L and ending with X and with U in the middle of it. Well, you can take my word for it. I like nothing better than being in the middle of Lux. Huh. My thanks to everyone who helped us make, make this such an enjoyable evening. Good night. Good Bye night, Miss Young. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Young and Mr. Barabar. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Melville Ruick. In a moment, we take you back to New York where Cecil B. DeMille is waiting to tell us about next week's program. Miss Young appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studios. Mr. Barrymore, Metro-Golden-Mayer, where he is making Captains Courageous with Spencer Tracy and Freddie Bartholomew. Mr. Gleason, RKO. Mr. Ripley, through courtesy of the Baker's Broadcast. Mr. DeMille, Paramount. And Mr. Silvers, 20th Century Fox, where he was in charge of music for the new film, Lloyd's of London. And now, here's Mr. DeMille speaking to you from New York. Miss Young, Mr. Barrymore, and to all who took part in tonight's broadcast, my sincere compliments. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in the Lux Radio Theater when we bring you Robert Montgomery in that bright romance, The Grand Duchess and the Waiter, with Alyssa Landy. I hope it will be a production up to the standard set tonight under Mr. Barrymore's supervision. And now I turn you back from New York to Mr. Barrymore in the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood. <laughs> Thank you from Hollywood, Mr. DeMille. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lionel Barrymore inviting you in behalf of our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, to join me in listening to the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night when Cecil B. DeMille produces The Grand Duchess and the Waiter, starring Robert Montgomery with Alyssa Landy. My thanks to you all as the Lux Radio Theater bids you good night from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.